Welcome to today's episode on critical care teaching. One of the important points that we stress on while training our fellows in critical care medicine is the importance of correcting potassium for the pH. And critically ill patients have either a low pH or a high pH and very rarely do they have a normal pH. So it becomes vitally important that every report from the pathology lab of serum potassium is corrected for pH. Let me give you an example. If a patient with DKA comes with a pH of 6.9 and a serum potassium of 6.2, many residents and even the uninitiated junior consultant intensivists or physicians would panic. They would look at 6.2, hyperkalemia, they would start soda bicarb, start insulin, or nebulize salbutamol and they fail to treat the real problem, the corrected serum potassium. For in metabolic acidosis, for every 0.1 in reduction in the pH, the serum potassium increases by 0.7 milliculins per liter. In this case, for example, the pH from 7.4 has fallen to 6.9 which is a fall of 0.5 and for every 0.1 it was 0.7 milliculins per liter so 5 into 0.7 is 3.5 milliculins and therefore your serum potassium reported of 6.2 is falsely elevated by 3.5 if you subtract that you get a value of 3.2.7 uh, so the corrected potassium is 2.7 it's not even normal it's low and imagine you have a person now with a real, real picture of hypokalemia and you give soda bicarb and insulin and nebulized salbutamol to this patient. This could lead to serious arrhythmias. It could even lead to death of the patient. Good intensivist would have picked up the fact that this 6.2 is actually 2.7 and before starting insulin would start a potassium drip for at least an hour or simultaneously with the uh, insulin depending on how severe the hyperglycemia is and that would be an appropriate treatment. Let's take another situation where the patient is vomiting a lot, there's contraction metabolic alkalosis and the pH is 7.7 and the serum potassium is reported as 2.5 or 2.6. What would people do? They would start replacing potassium. But you should know that in alkalosis, the serum potassium is falsely reduced. And for every 0.1 increase in the pH, the serum potassium actually falls by 0.3 milliculins per liter. Here from 7.4, it has gone to 7.7. .7. That's a change of 0.3. So three times, three into 0.3 is 0.9 or almost one milliculin. And so then you reported lab potassium of 2.6 is actually you need to add 0.9 becomes 3.5 it's not low and therefore you shouldn't panic into replacing potassium your emphasis should be on treatment of the contraction alkalosis the hypovolemia and giving fluids so good critical care is about uh, the most appropriate treatment because what is the hallmark of a critical ill patient? Extremely low tolerance for error. Everything that you do as a good intensivist must be very precise. And therefore, the teaching not to be forgotten is for every serum potassium report that comes to the ICU in a critically ill patient, the residents and nurses must be taught to correct for pH. I hope you enjoyed this small point or pearl. Uh, we will have many such uh, pearls for you in critical care. They are short, they are enjoyable, they allow you to practice these and the platform started by Dr. Rankur Gupta is wonderful, it's very popular and we hope that a lot of young doctors learn good critical care practice from here. If you like the video, please give a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel. Uh, if you haven't already done so, if you uh, like the video, please write it in your comments. They're encouraging for us. 
and if you have some suggestions then please do send your suggestions in see you in the next video have a wonderful day cheers